The first thing to say about trim is that it takes a long time. Or I'm just slow. I'm probably just slow. It's the first thing to be painted and there's a lot of it. Every little thing that goes on a house needs trim. Trim around the windows, trim around the doors, trim around the vents. Okay, I guess that's it, but it's a lot once you start adding it all up. The trim was something I just couldn't wrap my head around at first. I was struggling to find the answer of whether or not the trim went over the rain screen or if it attached straight to the sheathing. If it was to be attached to the sheathing, it would need to be thicker so that it stuck out past the siding because the siding would go over the rain screen. It would also need to be notched out to receive the flanges that go around the windows, otherwise it would sit all wonky. Unless you used shims or something to make it sit nice and flush. I made up my mind after reading more about the rain screen, and it does make sense that it would go over it, just like the siding. What I didn't know was that metal flashing is commonly used around windows and doors. I'm not sure how I missed that, but I'm pretty sure I'm still safe because I've allowed airflow and drainage in all the right places. Either way, here's how I made the trim. Choosing the material was tough, since it seems like anything can be used. We had chosen what Home Depot called primed fascia board for the fascia, and it was alternatively called trim board, so that seemed like a reasonable place to start. What was unique about it was that it came in an actual 1 inch thick board, not the usual 3 quarter inch. You know how most lumber is smaller than what you call it, like a 2x4 being 1.5 by 3.5 inch? So this trim board was called 1 and a quarter inch, but was physically 1 inch. That's important because it needed to stick out past the siding, which was about 3 quarter of an inch at its thickest. These boards were total crap though. They came in massive 16 foot lengths and were all bent and warped to sh**. I made it work, but I definitely had some choice words while running the long corner trim pieces through the table saw. The corner trim is where I started. To make the corners, my plan was to cut two boards to length and then send one through the table saw to make it an inch narrower so that the corner would look even. I thought it was a good plan, but here's where an earlier oversight finally became a problem to solve. Because I didn't stand off the fascia with a shim or a spacer of some kind, on the ends the way I did with the long sides of the house, I needed to notch the corner trim so that it would fit up under the fascia. It actually worked out pretty well. This is a two person job by the way. I managed to do it alone, but it was way harder than it needed to be. Getting accurate measurements for the lengths of the corner trim was a frustrating game of convincing the tape measure to not get constantly bent out of shape. I used clamps and screws to get the corner trim boards together. I had to slowly work down the board to coax them straight, but the end result was perfect. Attaching the trim after it was painted wasn't too much of a challenge. We slipped the corner under the fascia and started by screwing in the top. The bottom took some force to get the bent boards to cooperate. The corners stick out about a half inch below the trailer flange, which is the same as the siding. What? You're like slipping in the dirt and shit. Like, <laughs> my arms are stronger than my weight. That's a problem I've had my whole life. <laughs> oh, before painting the final coat for the corner trim, I caulked in all the screw holes and the seam. You can barely notice them now. The trim for the windows was fairly straightforward, but I did a few fancy things with the table saw. When getting the lengths, I simply measured the size of the window, then added a quarter inch all around to give me an eighth inch gap around the window. I actually think it's a bit too much and would do a sixteenth next time. The top piece was going to go over the sides, so I added six inches to that, and the sides were going to extend to meet up with the bottom, so they needed to be an extra three and a quarter inches long to match the bottom piece, which went between the sides. If that sounds confusing, you'll see what I mean in a minute. For the top edge of the trim, I cut off an angle into the pieces at 15 degrees. I didn't want to cut off more than I needed to, so I used a piece of 2x4 along the fence of the table saw and set the saw at 3 and 9 sixteenths of an inch. Damn, I'm getting a little technical with this one, hey?
So once this angle was cut out of the boards, they became almost exactly 3 inches on their face, and about 3 and a quarter on the back. I thought it would look a little funny if the top and bottom pieces of trim were 3 inches and the sides were 3.5 inches, so I ripped off a half inch on all the side pieces. To create a drip edge on the top trim pieces, I removed the guard from the table saw and retracted the blade almost all the way down. I set the saw at 3 16ths of an inch away from the fence and ran the boards through to give them a little groove. What will happen now is that when water runs down the face of the trim and starts to travel back inwards along the bottom of the trim, it will collect at the groove and drip down from there, rather than simply running back to the window itself. Since this groove sits in front of the window, the drop should fall in front of the window rather than water hitting the window itself. Of course, if there's any amount of wind, water will hit the window. I actually did this for the bottom pieces of trim as well, but it made no difference because of how close to flush the trim ended up being with the siding. Once all the trim was cut and painted, it was time to attach it to the house. The window trim was a little finicky because the rain screen tended to get crushed depending on where it was in relation to the screws going in. To solve this problem, we just cut little pieces of rain screen to go behind the trim where the screws were. I'm doing that here, sorry it's hard to see. That mostly kept the trim going on flat. So the window trim was fairly straightforward. Put a box around the windows, got it. The door though didn't have the flange the way the windows did, so it needed some extra attention. If a door comes with a brick mold, that acts as your flange from what I understand. This door did not have one, so the blue skin is all that's covering the gap between the door and the wood framing of the house. After studying doors around my parents' house, I came up with a solution. The rain screen strips are 3 8 of an inch, and that's what the trim sits on. So I figured I could essentially make an appropriate brick mold if I just ripped a 1x2 down to 3 8 of an inch thick. A table saw is so important for this kind of thing. I had never used one before building the tiny house, but I can't imagine life without one now. I attached these strips after painting them so that they sat about halfway on the door jam. Door jam? Did I just say door jam? Oh, I don't even know anymore. So that they sat about halfway on the door jam. The door jam is just the frame the door comes in, by the way. I didn't know what a door jam was until we bought the doors, so. The channel is called Rookie Roost for a good reason. As you can see, we held off on attaching the rain screen strips until after these pieces were in place. It made for a nice flat area to attach the trim once everything behind was good to go. Trim drove me so crazy I chopped all my hair off. Britney Spears style. The door trim went on even easier than the window trim. It was getting into mid-September at this point, so the days were noticeably shorter and we spent a lot of time working under the tarp. It was about this time when we started cursing every day we had previously packed up early or skipped entirely because we wanted to go lay and drink in the sun like a couple of slackers. Summer ends quick! Work that extra hour, get up a little earlier, fight the hangovers. You don't want to be siding your house in the dark and the rain, trust me. Trimming around the cement board was unique but not much of a challenge. The cement board stood the trim out from the wall an adequate amount. You'll also notice here that the little storage doors have the same brick mold deal going on as the main door, but they needed some extra work. They required me to build a jam from scratch. Let's dive into that. I needed something for the storage doors to attach to, and it needed to be weather resistant. The simple solution was to reverse engineer the jam that came with the main door. I used 1x4s and simply framed it in, but I stuck the bottom ledge out to create a bit of a sill, and used shims underneath to angle it so that the water would fall away from the house. It's a little hard to see the shims, but there they are, painted along with the rest of the board. I attached the custom brick mold the same way as the main door and caulked around to give it a seamless finish and weather resistance. I'll go into more detail about these little doors in a future video that will explain the entire process of building this external storage area. Here's a good shot of the finished trim on the front storage doors. The last pieces of trim to consider were to go around the water heater and the various vents around the house. 
For this, I decided it would be best to attach these trim pieces directly to the house wrap and caulk the whole way around it. The way I saw it, if water was to travel behind the siding down to a vent, I didn't want it traveling through the perforated rain screen and settling on the vent itself. I'd rather it hit a painted piece of trim and evaporate from there. The water heater in particular seemed like a bad place for water to be able to collect because it could easily then run back into the house itself. For the water heater, I cut some 2x4 scraps into pieces that would be the right size to give the water heater something to cleanly attach to, while setting it off from the front of the finished siding. I didn't leave much of the trim exposed since it wasn't really necessary and I didn't want to draw attention to the ugly necessities of the house. I got a little more creative for the vents. I bought a single 2x10 board and cut the pieces out of that, making each trim piece one solid piece to the exact size I wanted. The trim's only purpose is to stand the vents off from the siding and to prevent any water from ever getting behind the wall caps. Wall caps are just what they call the part of the vent that actually attaches to the outside wall. These are the wall caps for the range hood and the bathroom fan. The plan is to cut through the sheathing to install the wall caps when I'm ready with the appliances they attach to. For now, I covered them with tuck tape. With the house finally all trimmed out, we could begin siding. At this point, we were sitting at 275 hours of work on the house, and it had been about two and a half months since the start of the build. For a complete breakdown of the hours spent on the house day by day, check the description below for a link to the Rookie Roost website. Hopefully I've covered everything we did for the trim. It was a long and confusing process even though it seemed simple in the end. Thanks for watching. As always, the description below has links to the Rookie Roo social media accounts and the Patreon page where you can help support the channel in exchange for exclusive content. See you next time at the Roost.